in the last stream, we were, of course, working on trying to get the 10 rainbow blocks required to set up this portal to the overworld. Now, since then, and between streams chat, I have gone ahead and done quite a bit of terrain generating. I've generated, um, I think, maybe 12 chunks-ish worth, uh, worth of terrain here. And I did have to craft up a ton of torches because um, I've kind of got a bit complacent in the uh, in the end because in the end you only have to deal with the endermen right there are no hostile mobs that really actively spawn in the end outside of maybe shulkers that you can fairly easily avoid by just not going to an end city whereas here in the overworld you know I was regenerating the chunks and like instantly as soon as night falls uh, like this you know you end up with uh, creepers and skeletons and I, I fought a few blizzards as well we do have some blizz rods back in our system I think we're going to start chat by trying to get the void or controller or the void or minor controller and then from there try and set up a an actual void or minor there are also quests here to get uh, sap so i think what i am going to have to do is i'm going to have to keep generating the overworld until we find like a rubber tree from tech reborn we don't have one as of yet or i haven't found one yet and you can see this is like the last chunk that i uh that i loaded in i've yet to put down torches over there which is why there are just a plethora of mobs hanging around there waiting for me to uh to accidentally wander over into that uh into that area but uh but yeah we're gonna try and set up the void or minor and uh that's hopefully going to allow us to get a better continuous source of uh of resources uh, without having to rely on the orchid it's also going to allow us to get uh, overworld specific resources that up until now we've not really managed to get so um, i think the key resource that we're going to need going forward from the overworld is rubies and i believe we do need rubies in order to actually make uh, the tier one miner so if we look at the void or miner here to make it we need a block of diamonds which is easy enough now we need two interconnect which is made with connector and modified component which are made with iron redstone and black concrete powder and then more iron and more redstone so easy enough i think we also need a um a diode which is where we need this energy crystal which requires two electronic circuits and we should probably be uh, back at home for this but so you know what for now i'll just hang out upon this tree um, but yeah we need two electric circuits those can be made in the assembly machine and i think this is the easier way to do it but given that we don't have an assembly machine yet uh, we're going to do it in the uh, the old-fashioned assembler so uh, this doesn't seem too bad but it does require that uh, that sap there so i think we might we might have to start today's stream by just continually trying to uh trying to find a rubber tree because i've yet to find one and i don't think that we can really start chapter three or any of the quests within it until we get our first bits of rubber of course once we find our first rubber tree uh, we can then go ahead and uh, just stick the sampling from that uh, into our bonsai pot and get as much rubber uh, as we like but uh, to begin with it looks like we are going to have to go and find that manually um, on top of that we do need four blocks of lithoite these can be made by crafting together nine lithoite crystals which are made from flint diamonds uh, green powder and lime powder so that seems very doable we can get a ton of powder fairly easily and i think we have uh, you know well over uh, like 8,000 diamonds at this point. So getting, um, you know, nine of these crystals or even uh, 36 of these crystals really shouldn't be too difficult for us. The downside to the void all miners is that in order to get to the higher tier of miners, you have to run the previous tier. So uh, whilst we probably have the resources to uh, power and to run some of the higher tier miners here, the way that you get the second tier is with these uh, erodium blocks, which again are made with uh, erodium crystals. Uh, but the way that you get these uh, erodium crystals is through the tier one miner so you have to set the first miner up let it start running uh, unfortunately the first miner doesn't use a ton of power and is quite slow and i don't believe there's a way to speed it up so uh i kind of want to get this going as soon as possible so we can get as many of these crystals as possible so we can kind of hopefully fairly quickly move through the tiers and and get to those higher tiers of uh, void resource miner but uh, for now chat we are going to have to uh, to start at least by generating some more chunks one thing that people did point out in the uh, the youtube comments is that i have uh somewhat foolishly like built my portal into the uh into the earth here i actually don't know where the uh the portal is because we we put it down and we built the overworld around it right so the the portal to get home is like somewhere just buried uh, deep beneath the surface and so i think what we're probably gonna do is uh just for now use slash home and slash back but uh, i think much like with the nether it's going to make a lot of sense for us to make another waystone and uh, i guess i'll put it like right about here and we'll call this overworld so chat has reminded me that we do have access of course uh, to the uh, the nature's compass the compass that we used initially to find the acid plains biome 
we should now be able to use, and I think it might be hiding out uh, in here. It is indeed. We should now be able to use that, hopefully, to uh, to find the, the biome that we're after in order to get the rubber tree saplings. So let's see, chat. If we can't find a swamp biome, let's do a quick slash home. And then let's, like, maybe grab our bed. We are the only ones on the server right now, which is lovely. It means that I can uh, I can hopefully sleep in peace. Can't sleep in there, eh? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> what? That is the ultimate... Oh! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my <laughs> Where is the pack maker? I need someone I need to have words. Alright, so this is the rubber tree. Finally. Now we had to travel over to a forest biome to find it. But uh, if we look in at the quest book, it says European eraser. Alright, I admit these are not for schooling, but they are great for making cables. Please stay safe when you are working with electricity. Sir slash madam. Obtain some sap. Now, chat, do we need a tree tap? I would assume the answer is yes. I've not actually played with Tech Reborn, but I have played with Industrial Craft 2. So I'm going to assume that uh, much like in Industrial Craft 2, if we grab this old uh, tree tap here and right-click on the, uh, the yellow sap spot, like that, we get some sap. Nice. Of course, the real thing that we're after here um, is the sapling, right? That's really all we want. Because for the most part, the one sap that we're going to get from this one tree is not going to help us too much. But if we can get one rubber tree sapling, we can then take that rubber tree sapling back with us and uh, stick it in the old bonsai pot to hopefully get infinite sap going forward. Okay, so now we have one rubber tree sapling. That took us way longer than I thought it was going to take us, chat. But now that we have one, we should be able to go ahead and make um, our favorite item in the game, of course, the old bonsai pot here. And uh, I'll make a few of these. I'll make like three for now. And I'll also turn them all into uh, hopping bonsai pots as well. Uh, we do only have the one sapling, of course, at the moment. But uh, I would very much so like, if we can, you know, to uh, get a few of these going. Because I think we are going to need quite a bit of, uh, of rubber going forward. And uh, for now, we'll just put these down somewhere over here. I don't think it matters too much where they go um, at the moment. In fact, I'll put them over on this uh, this back wall here. Let's do a quick check in JEI to see what the best um, block is here. Grass? Grass. Thankfully, we should have some grass. We do indeed. And uh, we can always get more with our uh, good old friend, the trowel, as well, if we, uh, if we didn't have any. I also do think that you can burn meal bonsai pots to make them faster. You totally can. Look at that. So we can... Uh, do you, uh, also, let me check real quick. Do you get uh, saplings out of the bonsai pot? You do. Okay, yeah. So if we get... Just a bunch of bone meal. And we very rapidly right-click that onto here. That will cycle through and, uh, and get us some more saplings, which we can then spread out to, uh, to the other bonsai pots. I'm not really too bothered about wasting bones here because we can craft one bone meal with one overworldly matter, which we do have 10,000 of, uh, to make 22 bones. So getting just stacks and stacks and stacks of bones really isn't going to be a problem for us going forward. So that gets us the sap. We can then, I'm assuming, smelt the sap, yeah, into rubber. We can then craft that rubber with copper cable to get that insulated copper wire, which is then going to allow us uh, to make that void or miner. So the void or miner is what we're after. The diode does require the electronic circuits. The electronic circuits require insulated copper wire, redstone, but then they also require refined steel ingots. And I think refined steel ingots are going to be uh, kind of the next difficult thing for us to make. Uh, they're kind of a key component in, uh, in a lot of the stuff going forward. And uh, there's even like a few quests on producing refined steel more efficiently. You'll see this quest here says producing refined steel ingots can be quite grindy. Looking through the recipe book, you find a way to circumvent the normal recipe. We'll get to that hopefully fairly soon. Uh, but to start with, there's uh, this quest here called Double Refinement. Apparently, refining iron ones isn't enough. You're going to need a better base material for those advanced machines. Refining steel once more should be good. But how? Craft a refined steel ingot. So refined steel is made for now in the arc furnace later on down the line we can do it in the industrial blast furnace with calcium carbonate and that's where 
that other quest comes in because you can make calcium carbonate with slag and distilled water and distilled water can be made in the distiller, which is uh, this thing right here. But so we'll come back to that. For now, if we want to make the, uh, the iron, the uh, refined steel even, we need to do it in the arc furnace and we do it with three steel ingots, two calcite dust and two coke dust. Now, steel we have, and uh, we should have quite a bit of steel because of course our blast furnace has been running through many, many blocks of iron. Yeah, we've got 216 blocks of steel now, which is perfect, and 65,000 more iron uh, in our storage drawer, ready to go uh, should we need it. Coke dust is also not too bad. Uh, again, our new advanced coke oven here has been running away and does have 28 uh, blocks of coal there. I do think that we should probably look at uh, getting like another stack of, uh, of coal blocks and just putting those in the coke oven just so that we have the coal coke ready uh, to turn into coke dust as and when we, uh, we need it going forward. The only tricky part, I think, about getting this is going to be the calcite dust. Because right now we don't have a way of making it. I assume that the way we're going to make it is with the centrifugal separator. And then either using marble or basalt. I think both marble and basalt are blocks that we only find in the overworld. So I think we're going to have to go to the overworld. Do a little bit of vein mining to try and find some basalt or marble. Bring that back, run that through the centrifugal separator to get some of that uh, calcite dust. And then move on from there. We could also run lapis through an industrial centrifuge, but that only gets us small piles. And of course, uh, the industrial centrifuge itself is quite the expensive machine to make. And I'm assuming does require, yeah, reinforced uh, steel. So yeah, I think we do have to go through the centrifugal separator, at least to start with. Basalt can be found in the nether too. The blazing pyrothium pools have them. Mm, that's a very good point, actually. I had forgotten about that. That's probably our best bet because we know where those are. So yeah, let's take 52, I guess, blocks of coal and throw those in there. Uh, for now, let's grab you and let's go run those through the crusher. Chat did point out to me last time that you can, of course, run uh, the whole block of, uh, of coal coke through the crusher instead of crafting it down first. And uh, it is a little bit faster this way. You don't have to wait for each uh, individual piece of, uh, of coal coke to be, uh, to be crushed. It'll just come out nine at a time, which is a lot quicker. And then the, uh, the centrifugal separator doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult to make. We do have to make another industrial machine chassis, which is going to mean we have to get some more uh, solder for the PCB here. I think it might also not be a terrible idea for us to try and get uh, like a bunch of PCBs going. We do have quite a lot of circuit boards ready. Yeah, we have 26 unassembled, uh, unassembled PCBs here. It would probably be a good idea to try and get quite a few of these turned into uh, to regular PCBs, especially now that we have a lot more steel and redstone and access to a good amount of plastic. I think we could do this fairly easily. Can I, chat, drop all of this in at once? For example, can I do cyan, black, steel, and redstone? Like that? What's the uh, the pressure requirement there? You can. Nice. So, chat, now that we have 30 transistors, 30 capacitors, and 10 unassembled PCBs, we can, of course, craft those up. Um, there have been some recommendations made of how we can do this a little bit better, because up until now, I've been putting down the fluid transfer node, and then, you know, pulling out what we need to pull out, breaking it when I want to put stuff in the smell tree, and then putting it down again. It's a whole thing, right? Um, I think we can do this much, much easier using the, uh, the old fluid conduits here from NDIO for a few reasons. One... We, so unfortunately, you can only make solder in the smell tray. There's no other way to make it. So if we're going to ever automate the production of, uh, of PCBs, we're going to have to do it here, I think. And also, I do think solder is used for some other recipes as well. Yeah, it's used in the making of electronic circuits, which I think we are going to want to automate at some point. So we are going to have to have like a smell tree that's dedicated to making solder, I believe, at that point. Now... Unfortunately, I don't know if you can filter for fluids. There is a basic fluid filter. There's no option for it in here. Does anybody know if the highest tier of um, a fluid conduit has the ability to filter fluids? Okay, so some end of fluid conduits here. Let's see if these do accept a fluid filter. Yeah, these do have options for, uh, for fluid filters, which is exactly what I want. So if I grab the assembler, and put that down there. I'm essentially going to try and filter this so it only pulls out the solder. That way, it's not going to pull out any of the uh, like molten lead or molten tin, hopefully. 
So uh, I assume the way this works is we use buckets. So what I might have to do is temporarily get rid of the assembler, place down the casting table, make sure this is set to never active for the moment, put in some tin and some lead, wait for that to smelt down, grab a bucket, and uh, seemingly we have no empty buckets, although I think there might be one in here. Never mind, I'm incorrect. That's fine, we can make a new one. And then if we put that bucket in here, if we just set this to always active, that should get us a bucket of solder, at which point we can then come into here, we can put in the fluid filter on extract, we can go to edit filter settings, put in the solder there, and that should only now extract solder, and well again we'll leave it on always active, so now if we replace the casting table with the assembler, I think we should be good to go, right? I think we should be able to put in basically just as much tin and as much lead as we like and have that work out just fine. Uh, someone in the Twitch chat said, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think it only accepts solder. Uh, the problem potentially there would come with, um, I was going to say it would come with fluids being stuck in the pipe, although I don't think that the end of fluid conduits actually hold any fluids. I think they just transfer it from point to point. So maybe you're right, actually. Maybe that's not a problem. And there we go. Nice. So now we put in the PCBs, we put in the transistors and the capacitors, and there we go. It gets us all the uh, all the actual PCBs that we can use. So getting these going forward really shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be too difficult for us. I'm quite surprised at the fact that we are holding steady on power there because I think it's only getting power from this uh, this one wireless RF transmitter. And I, I seem to remember that previously it took a lot more power than that. But either way, that seems to be working. And so hopefully now we have what it takes to make the uh, centrifugal separator, which I will bookmark as well. Yeah, let's go ahead and make maybe like five industrial machine chassis. All right. So there is five more industrial machine chassis. And that should allow us hopefully to make a good few machines going forward here. So let's now see, chat, if we can't make this separator, right? Uh, it needs a compass, easy enough. It needs uh, some constantan, which I believe is copper and nickel in the old alloy smelter. Uh, it is indeed. Hopefully we have both of those lying around. I know we've got copper, but nickel could be a little dicey. Uh, we do thankfully have enough for now at least. So we'll do, uh, I think it's just one of each actually. Should get us two nickel, uh, two constantan. It does, beautiful. And at that point, we're basically good to go. We do need two copper gears, which uh, of course do have to be made uh, in the old metal press, but that is not a problem. Uh, the machine frame is just the machine chassis with glass and iron. And yeah, at that point, we just need to go and take our copper, run that over through the old metal press here. And uh, let's not make, uh, let's not forget to swap out the rod for the gear press. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to throw a whole stack on there. Uh, we've got, you know, well over, we've got close to a thousand copper. So I'm not going to worry too much about uh, making multiple copper gears now, just so we have them for the future. I know quite a lot of machines from thermal expansion do, uh, do require copper gears. So I think having these ready to go is going to make our lives a little easier going forward. And at that point, Chad, that should be this guy taken care of. So now that we have the separator, our next task is going to be to uh, get some basalt. I think we might have like one. We've got four <laughs> in, the, uh, in the system here, so we can... Uh, run that through the separator. Oh, it needs to be basalt dust, of course, which we have to run through the uh, the crusher first. All right, in that case, let's go grab our coke dust from earlier. Let's run through this four basalt, I guess. It's unfortunate that you can't run that through the sag mill. That would have made life a little easier, but it, lo it looks like we do have to run the basalt through the crusher uh, to get it. And again, it's unfortunate that you do need 16 basalt dust to get three of the uh, the calcite dust, which is basically two reinforced steel. All right, so we're going to have to go find like a lot more basalt chat. Thankfully, as people have pointed out, we do have some basalt over in the nether, and it really shouldn't be too hard for us to get some. It is near the pyrothium, so it's a little risky, but I think it's uh, I think it's fairly gettable. And I think that the silk touch nature of our pickaxe is actually helping us here, because I think normally you get this in like basalt cobblestone form, uh, and so we would have had to uh, like resmelt it had we not have uh, did we not have 
smelting on our pickaxe. All right. So we got two stacks, which I think is uh, is hopefully going to be a decent start. Uh, let me quickly grab some endstone here. I should definitely have had my Devnal on me. My uh, inventory's filling up with endstone, uh, with the uh, brick. Not ideal. And uh, let's throw, like, basically just a full stack into here. I guess we'll do a stack and 12. The reason for 12 is that 12 makes this uh, four that we had to begin with up into uh, into a multiple of 16 that's then usable in the uh, in the separator. But at that point, chat, we should be basically there on getting some of the uh, the calcite dust. That should allow us, once we have the, uh, the refined steel, to make an electronic circuit. We do need two of those. That's fine. We are going to have to go find a ruby, but that shouldn't be too bad either. And we are going to have to make some hardened signalum glass, which is hardened glass or fused quartz uh, with signalum blend, which again, shouldn't be too difficult. We have made signalum before uh, in the past. So none of this really looks too, too bad, chat. I think it's, I think it's doable. A little tedious, for sure, but definitely doable. So we've got a stack of basalt dust here. Let's put that stack over in the separator. It is pretty slow, slower than I was anticipating. We can, of course, speed that up with some upgrades. The uh, machines from Thermal Foundation or Thermal Expansion do have the ability to be upgraded via upgrade kits. The first of which is the old uh, hardened upgrade kit here, which requires a bronze gear and then four invar. Uh, invar being a alloy blend between nickel and iron. And then uh, cop uh, bronze, of course, being uh, copper and tin. So I will try and make that because we are going to have to, like we might as well, we're going to be using this uh, separator for quite some time. So it makes sense to, uh, to invest in upgrading it, I think, sooner rather than later. We, of course, do need that copper or that bronze even in uh, gear form. So we will go one, two, three, four, and uh, drop that on there. I should probably get rid of this hopper. Honestly, it's making my life harder than it needs to be when it comes to dropping things onto the uh, the metal press here. Or maybe just replace it with uh, something that's a little bit more, something that's capable of like depositing multiple items onto the belt. But once we have that, that should be at least the first tier of upgrade kit done. So we can uh, right click to place that on. And you'll see now it's using 30 RF per tick as opposed to, to, to 20. So hopefully it's about a third faster. Uh, but it also has space for an augmentation now. And uh, one of the first augments that I think we probably want to invest in is the auxiliary reception coil. Uh, this allows us to uh, basically just speed up the uh, the machine. It uh, does require a little bit of gold, which uh, as you'll know if you've been watching is a little bit of a scarce resource for us right now, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult for us to get a little bit more here. Beautiful. And so yeah, this is just a redstone reception coil with gold. And if we put that in, we should see hopefully the redstone flux per tick go up even more. Yeah, that jumped right up to 50. Oh, even more, 60. RF per tick, nice. Uh, we could, of course, take that one step further. The uh, The next tier of upgrade kit is the reinforced upgrade kit, which is four electrum, one silver gear, and then two fused quartz. I think we actually might have most of that. Yeah, we're just missing the silver gear. So you know what? I will uh, very quickly grab some uh, silver here, run that through both the sag mill and the uh, the alloy smelter. And then, of course, finally, the uh, metal press. Kaboom. And there we go. So now we're up to 80 RF per tick. And again, now that we've put in another upgrade kit, we do have another augment slot. And so if we wanted to, we could even uh, go so far as to make another reception coil. I put that in as well. So now it's using 120 RF per tick. So hopefully it's going to be a little bit faster here. We do now have all of uh, the calcite that we need though. So for now, let's take the calcite dust let's clear our, <laughs> clear my inventory out a little bit it's a bit of uh, of a mess but we're going to take the calcite dust along with we can put away the train scanner for now um along with the coke dust some steel and that's it that should allow us to make re uh, re refined or reinforced refined steel ingots all right 
So uh, I'm assuming this uses a lot of power. Oh, not quite as much. It uses uh, 1024. So about a quarter of what the, um, the rainbow blocks used. Still quite a bit, but not too bad. And there we go. We get some refined steel ingots. Okay, perfect. So um, what's the next quest there? Working within frames. Nothing to see here, just a simple machine frame. Craft a basic machine frame. Okay, we'll come back to that one. Uh, for now, we are going to have to get some, uh, some rubber and some cable. Professional technicians always use rubber to protect themselves. Craft insulated copper cable. All right, that seems very doable. Uh, we did, of course, get some sap earlier. So if we take six sap and run that through the old alloy smelter there, and then craft up that uh, six resulting rubber with some copper ingots. Oh, no, my... <laughs> My, my machine's running out of power. That's never good. I assume that's the uh, the arc furnace right there, taking all the uh, all the juice. Yeah, it's almost done. Although we should definitely look at getting uh, a better power source, I think. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we've got 12 of these, actually, which is uh, not a bad start, I don't think. But uh, yeah, back over here, copper and insulated copper cable. Nice. Uh, we also, of course, did set up our... Bonsai pots over here, so we do have now quite an, a lot of extra sap ready to go as well, which is very nice indeed. We can get uh, more of those bonsai pots if we need even more sap in the future. Uh, but for now, let's go back and look and see if we can't get this void all miner. So the block of diamonds, easy enough, right? We've got 8,000 diamonds, getting another block, uh, crafting a block there, not going to be a problem. The interconnect also I don't think is going to be a problem. We do need some black concrete powder, but again, that shouldn't be uh, too difficult for us. We just need some gravel and then some black dye. Um, I think we will definitely go with the uh, the floor black powder if we can. We should also find a better place for this mechanical squeezer, other than uh, out in the, <laughs> kind of out there on the back wall. Uh, but either way, for now, floral, we don't have, uh, do we have black powder? We don't have black powder, eh? That is unfortunate. Very much so. Looks like we're going to have to use some uh, floral fertilizer here to try and find a black flower. Thankfully, the Britannia gods are on our side today, and we got a black flower instantaneously. And so at that point, we just need bone meal and shears. And then we should basically have as much black dye as we need. So uh, let's craft that with the old pestle and mortar. I am hopeful that we can use this. I should have probably checked before I started uh, started making it, but uh, let's give that a go, shall we? So can I make black concrete powder using floral black powder? I can indeed. Perfect. Uh, eight is more than enough for now. And so that should be basically everything apart from the blocks of iron that we need in order to make the modified component. And again, we'll just make the four for now. And then from there... The connector requires just yet more iron and redstone. And at that point, that should be everything to make two blocks of interconnect. Nice. Other than that, we also need four litharite blocks. These are made from litharite crystals. These guys here, so we need 36 litharite crystals. Uh, these are made from diamonds, flint. Uh, it is putting an organic green dye here, but I think we can use any green dye, right? Yeah, and it's going to make a lot more sense. The floral green dye is a lot easier to get than uh, the green dye it's using. We also need lime as well. Uh, once again, unfortunately, it does seem like we're out of floral green powder, which is less than ideal. Okay, so a little bit of dye later. And uh, let's see how many of the old litharite crystals we can make. We need... 36. And as luck would have it, I think we're actually going to get there. Ooh, we're just missing a little bit of, uh, of lime dye. That is actually fine. The lime is the, the least of our, of our worries. That should, I think, basically be everything, at least for the uh, for the lithoite crystals. We'll go ahead and make, uh, I guess, like eight more of you. And then from there, let us craft all of that up into 36 lithoite crystals. Nice. That's going to get us the four lithoite blocks. 
or just litharite. And then at that point, we're missing the clear lens, which is just glass. And we're missing the diode. The diode, of course, being the, the tricky part here. Uh, it does require a redstone repeater, but that's also easy enough. The hardened glass, I don't think is going to be too bad. So we need seven. It's made in sets of two, so we're going to have to make eight, which means we need eight uh, quartz glass. And by the quartz glass, I mean fused glass, which is not called quartz glass. It's called fused glass, but it is made from quartz. Not to be confusing. Getting that's not going to be too bad. The harder part is going to be getting the signalum. But again, I don't think that's going to be too difficult for us. We need uh, copper, silver, and then destabilized redstone. Um, unfortunately, the destabilized redstone is made either in a magma crucible or in uh, more easily in the smeltery. We're going to use the smeltery because it is easier, but it does mean kind of tweaking uh, the system we currently have. I think what I'm going to do, chat, is I think I'm going to make a new drain. I think we'll leave this drain here. I don't want to mess with this one uh, that's working on, you know, solder. I think I'm going to set up a new drain. Uh, how much seared brick do we have? The answer is none. Uh, however, we should now have what it takes to make some more uh, grouts. And therefore, we should be able to make some more, like another casting basin fairly easily. So yeah, something like that should do it for us. And then we might as well use the other fluid conduits that we have. And then uh, we are gonna, we're going to have to make another... Um, I was going to say we're going to have to make another drain. I think... It is going to involve me moving this, but it actually probably makes more sense, chat, to do something like this and just move this drain here because then we can output on both sides like that. And we can leave that doing its thing over there. I might have... Oh, no, I was going to say I might have deleted the, the filter. I don't think I have. I think the filter's just in here. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah, in here we're going to do the same thing. Uh, extract, always active, but filtered for solder. Here is going to be insert. And then over here, we can do the uh, what we were doing before with the old casting table. Uh, we do need a bucket. And then we can pull our redstone out directly into there. With this one, chat, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. We're going to have this one set to extract active with signal. Because at that point, what we can do is we can take our redstone. We can put the redstone into here. And I actually only think we need 10 redstone in there. And then we can use a, a lever just to give us a bit of control over when, you know, things actually get pulled out. We can make sure the redstone's at the bottom, pull that out. And there we go. That should be a bucket of destabilized redstone. It is perfect. Okay. We might have to do that a few times, maybe twice. I was just thinking about how much, um, how much signal we're going to need. We'll take three copper and one silver we also might need more silver actually it looks like we're gonna be fine for now but we are gonna need more silver i think sooner rather than later which uh is probably gonna result in us having to get a um i think a nether orchid most certainly so this is fuse quartz and signalum right is that the uh, oh it has to be done in the induction smelter right this guy right here so let's, I think we're done with the soul binder for now. Let's cycle that guy out. And then let's do signalum plus fused quartz. No, that doesn't work. You can't use fused quartz. It says, no, it says you can't use fused quartz as the recipe. Oh, it does say it can't be used to craft this item. I thought it was talking about this item. It means it can't be used to craft the signalum. All right, so we need to make the old, uh, the old fashioned hardened glass from uh, thermal expansion. This guy right here, which is uh, thankfully not too bad, actually. I do wonder if you can do... Can I do lead dust with quartz glass? No, you can't put fused quartz in here at all, eh? Okay, that's fine. How much obsidian do we have? 216. That is not going to be a problem then. Let's run the obsidian through there. Let's grab some lead as well. Um, I do think it has to be in dust form. But that's not a problem. Perfect. And then hardened glass plus signal and blend. Let's make that uh, augment. Just to make this guy even quicker. And yeah, that should be all the hardened glass. At that point, I think we are basically there. We do need the energy crystal, which does require some redstone, those electronic circuits, and the ruby. So I guess let's do the electronic circuits while we're here. We do need more solder. Right now we're missing lead.
Actually, I don't know why I put that refined steel away. I do need that, I think, momentarily. Uh, let's get a little bit more lead and tin. I'll put both of those in here. We'll start with the lead and then follow that up with, uh, with maybe some more tin as well. That should hopefully get us more solder, which we can put in here. And then to make two circuit boards, we need uh, 12 copper wire, two refined steel, and four redstone. Okay. We only have six copper wire. That's fine. We can uh, get more very easily, I think. We did just grab a ton of sap, so we'll uh, we'll take six and run that through the old alloy smelter once again. We've definitely got enough copper. And so I think that should be two circuit boards pretty easily taken care of. Uh, the final piece of the puzzle, of course, once we actually get the uh, the two circuit boards here, is going to be the Rube. We need one, one Rube, which I'm hopeful is not going to be too difficult for us. Now, again, I'm not quite sure why, but the, the, the machine here, unfortunately, only lets you put solder in if there are no other items in. It's super weird, but the solder doesn't come in through the pipes if there are items in here. Like, you have to put the solder in first, then put the items in, which is a little weird. And it's going to make this a little awkward to automate, but I think that's kind of maybe part of the point. Um, I think the pack really wants you to, uh, to move on and use the assembling machine from uh, Tech Reborn to make these in the future, as opposed to using the, uh, the assembler from Extra Utilities. For now, though, we have the two circuit boards. So let's do a quick inventory dump here, chat. Because now the only thing we're missing is the Rube to make the energy crystal, right? Our signal and glass should be done. It is indeed. We'll throw that away into the system for now. So let's head on back through to the overworld and see if we can't find one Rube. I don't think it's going to be too difficult for us. If we look in... JI here, we can see that Ruby Ore spawns down at around Y level 1415. What's the frequency of Diamond Ore? Doesn't say, eh? I was hoping to find like a percentage so we could compare the uh, the frequency of Diamond Ore with the frequency of Ruby Ore. And uh, I was going to go through my waste on there, but actually I think it makes sense to go through the portal because the portal is currently much closer to the to Y level 14. Here we go. All right. It took us a while, a lot of uh, mining around Y level 14, but we have finally found some Ruby Ore. I'll just take the two for now. We can always come back for the uh, for the rest later. It took a lot of vein mining uh, to find it. There's not really that much of it around. It is surprisingly rare, but now that we have it, chat, if we head on back through to the overworld, we should now finally have everything that we need in order to make the Void Ore Miner Controller Tier 1. So uh, if we go and make the Energy Crystal, like so, craft that up into the old diode using the signal and glass and craft all that together, we finally get the controller. Now, in order to actually use that, uh, we do have to actually build the multi-block uh, structure that is the void or miner. So if we type in a digital guide into JEI, this guy right here, which is pretty easy to make, it does require one more uh, litharite crystal here, uh, but this guy is going to show us how to uh, to build the multi-block. So uh, environmental tech, we are looking for the void or miner and we are looking for tier one. So the void ore miner will mine ore from the void. These miners use large amounts of energy when modifiers are installed, so be sure to provide them a decent amount of energy. Uh, and then we have a few modifier options, uh, but you'll see at tier one, there are zero uh, kind of modifier slots, and so unfortunately we can't make uh, the first tier faster, uh, but we do get some more information about the first tier. It's a seven by four by seven structure, and to make it, we need 24 structure machine frame at tier one. We need 20 structure panel, zero modifiers, two laser cores, and then one clear laser lens. So the clear laser lens, we've already made one of today, and we'll go ahead and make another one. It is just seven glass, like so. The structure blocks, we need both structure frame, which I'll bookmark, and we also need a structure panel, right? So let's bookmark both of those. The structure frame is made with interconnect, so yet more iron and redstone, with iron ingots, lapis, and then more litharite crystals. The structure panel is yet more iron, some gold nuggets, and then even more connectors, so even more redstone and iron. And again, if we check the book here, we need 24 of that tier one structure frame and 20 of that structure panel. Now, unfortunately, you do only make these one at a time, which means if we're going to get 24 tier one structure frame, we do need 48 litharite crystals, which is quite a few more. Um, it is very doable. We do, of course, still have uh, a ton of diamonds available to us. However, it does look like we are going to have to get yet more green dye and yet more lime dye. And boom. Okay, so hopefully that should be enough now. It's 
almost is. We're actually low on flint, of all things. However, thankfully, I do believe that we can turn our gravel uh, into flint right through the old uh, mechanical squeezer here. We can indeed. So we're actually pretty much there on the lithoite crystals. I don't think, chat, that the rest of... Actually, we already have flint in there. Perfect. I might as well go ahead and uh, make a bit more flint for the next time I'm here, and we'll take the old uh, gravel as well out of there. But uh, I don't think that the rest of this is really... Hello, my friend. Uh, really going to be too difficult, right? We've got a lot of iron. We've got a lot of redstone. I think most of what's left now really shouldn't be too difficult for us. So let's get the last batch of, or the last two batches of uh, lithoite crystals there. And then let's see if we don't have what it takes to make 24 tier one structure frames. So I'm going to go ahead. We've got 4,000 redstone and 76,000 iron and uh, make just a few stacks of uh, connector here because even if we make too much for the tier one structure frame, uh, again, looking in the book here, we need even more structure frame for tier two and then even more for tier three and tier four and so on and so forth. And so we're definitely going to use all of the connector that we make and more going forward uh, in the pack here. So uh, we really can't make too much of it right now. We do also need more modifier component, which again, shouldn't be too bad. We might have to make some more black concrete powder actually. But again, that really shouldn't be too difficult for us. We do have uh, a little bit of floor black powder there left, and we've still got more uh, black flowers should we need more black petals uh, in the future. So uh, let's go ahead and again, craft up really as many of those as we uh, as we possibly can, which still might not even be enough. Oh no, we did get enough there, perfect. All right, and that should be, hopefully, chat, enough to get us 24 of this tier one structure frame. And then this one looks, I think, quite a bit easier. We'll make a bunch of iron bars and then uh, a bunch of connector, craft all those up. I don't know how we're doing on gold nuggets the answer is not very well but again we can throw down some more gold and uh, utilizing our pickaxe hopefully get quite a lot of gold nuggets fairly quickly here beautiful and i think that should be probably more than enough to uh, to craft 20 of these it is nice and at that point i think we're basically there right yeah we just need two laser cores how expensive are laser cores we need oh it's more of the same more glass more iron more redstone uh, and thankfully they are not too bad we are a little light on the old uh, glass front there but we can just throw some of our sand uh, into the old alloy smelter and boom nice so i believe the easiest way to assemble this is using the assembler from environmental tech which is made with two obsidian and you guessed it get another litharite crystal you can if you want build the multi-block by hand but again the assembler uh, kind of does all the work for you so long as you have all of the items in your inventory so now if we head on back over to the overworld and we place this guy down out over the void it does have to be over the void in order for it to actually work you can't put this down over land otherwise it just won't uh, it won't do its thing the the actual like center core needs to be able to to send a beam down to the void so uh, for now what we'll do is we'll build a few blocks out because it does take up again uh, like a seven by seven area and if we place it down let's say right about here and then we get rid of the uh, the cobblestone around it what we should then be able to do i believe is just right click with the assembler or hold right click sorry with the assembler and there we go that should hopefully i believe be a basically fully functioning void or minor nice now of course i did not take off and reapply my ring there which is why that is not working for us but what we should be able to do now, chat, is if we do a quick slash home, grab ourselves a chest. For now, I'll grab an iron chest. Uh, and you know what? Let's actually go ahead and upgrade that to a gold chest. And given that we do have a fair amount of diamonds, I'm actually quite tempted to upgrade this all the way up to a uh, diamond chest here. Just need one more glass. That is fine. Because I'm thinking what I might do here, given that we don't have an easy way of transferring power from the end to the overworld just yet i'm thinking what i might do is uh, i might grab my culinary generator which is back in at the end there and for now what i'm thinking is i'm going to grab our packing tip i'm going to grab the crate full of apples that we have right here i'm going to take these apples through to the overworld and uh, basically just stick them down with a hopper on top of the culinary generator to hopefully continually power the void or miner between this stream and the next stream so that way hopefully when we come back for, uh, for the next stream, we'll have enough of those tier two crystals to upgrade uh, to the next tier and also hopefully, uh, you know, quite a few resources as well. This is, of course, not where I want to be. I want to do a quick slash back if I can. Beautiful. And then, like I said, for now, what we'll do is we'll put the 
diamond chest on top, like so. Uh, all of the output from the Void Ore Miner does go directly to that, uh, any inventory above it, I guess. And then the culinary generator for now, I'll put right about there with a hopper, let's say right about here, and the uh, apple drawer right about there. That should hopefully begin powering this guy. It is indeed. And we should, I believe, fairly soon, you'll see the power is being used there uh, in the top left. We should see our first kind of ores or crystals even appear uh, in that top slot. We could also, if we wanted to, grab some speed upgrades. Because uh, by default, I believe this guy outputs about 32 redstone flux per tick. And as you can see uh, in the bottom left there, the Void All Miner uses 660 redstone flux per tick by default. And so uh, if we could upgrade that a little bit to make it fast enough, hopefully we will uh, see a few more resources here. There we go. We got one redstone ore. So it would appear that even with 16 speed upgrades, this is still not producing 660 RF per tick, because you'll see we're still not uh, gaining RF in the uh, in the top left there. It is definitely going faster now uh, than it was previously, and we are slowly but surely uh, getting resources, but uh, really what we're after is uh, we are after the next tier of crystals. We're after these uh, erodium crystals. Those are going to allow us to upgrade and move on uh, to the higher tiers. Uh, there is like an upgraded lens you can put in. So right now we're using the, uh, the clear laser lens, uh, as you can see in the top left there. Um, however, you will notice, for example, if we wanted to get uh, those erodium crystals, you'll see that uh, if you click on the Void Ore Miner here in JEI, it shows the chance of getting one with a clear lens is 5.61%. Uh, however, if you replace that clear lens with a crystal lens, the chance jumps up to 16.7%. So you can change the color of the lens or the type of the lens that you use here to change what resources you get. Uh, again, for example, if we wanted to get more ruby ore, to start with, you don't get Ruby Ore until tier three, which is, you know, why we want to get up there nice and fast. But also you'll see that again, uh, the clear lens is 2.25%, but we could put down a red lens to really increase our chance of getting uh, that Ruby Ore. Like we almost quadruple our chances from two to 8% there, which is, uh, you know, would be pretty nice if, we, if Ruby Ore was specifically uh, what we were looking for. But yeah, I think that is where I'm going to wrap up for today. Uh, next time we'll come back, we will look at getting a better way of transferring power from at uh, the end, over to the overworld, there's a few things I want to do. Um, I do think we want to set up some better power generation. We might look at trying to automate uh, the production of nether stars, pumping those nether stars into, uh, you know, a nether star generator. Um, I also would like to look at uh, collecting the power that's coming out of our diesel generator, like getting a capacitor bank down and, and actually storing some of the, the redstone flux coming out of here. Uh, I think I might put down an extra garden cloche for hemp seeds, because as you can see right now, uh, we're not really keeping up on hemp seed production, we're producing way more sugarcane, and therefore, uh, you know, we're backed up on ethanol, but not producing enough uh, of the plant oil to keep up with the, the biodiesel. Also, previously, I did think that the diesel generator stopped, like, using biodiesel when it was full on power, like, when it couldn't send the power anywhere. Um, I no longer think that's the case. The wiki kind of says that it uh, just deletes the biodiesel, like, it'll keep using it, uh, even if it's not generating any power or not sending it anywhere, which kind of makes sense, because I feel like we are producing quite a bit of, uh, of biodiesel, but uh, we're kind of always running into uh, to power problems. So I think we do want to set up some kind of system to where we have like a capacitor bank. And when that capacitor bank starts to get full, we basically send out a redstone signal to uh, to turn the diesel generator off, therefore kind of manually stopping it from, uh, from using any more biodiesel. But that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, that is where I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for today.